Hello and welcome to the Synopsys Optical Solutions Group training series. In this video, we will demonstrate how to import CAD-generated surfaces for use in a non-sequential surface range. It is possible to import and use CAD-generated geometry in Code 5. Imported geometry can be used for visualization only, as individual surfaces in a sequential range, or, as we will demonstrate in this video, as surfaces or assemblies in a non-sequential range. Using CAD-generated geometry in a non-sequential range would be appropriate if some, but not all, of the rays will intersect with a given surface, such as might be the case with a mechanical structure that would interfere with an imaging path. For our demonstration model, we will use a model of the Keck telescope. We will add the secondary spider as well as the outer edge of the complex aperture using CAD-generated geometry. We will then look at the effect on the pupil map and at the point spread function. Our starting model shows the primary and secondary mirrors. There is also a dummy surface placed 20,000 millimeters from the primary. The pupil map shows a round aperture with no obstructions. The point spread function, shown on a dB scale, shows the typical airy disk pattern expected of a very well corrected system. To prepare the model for the CAD generated geometry, we will add two surfaces in front of the primary mirror. We will now select Edit New Non Sequential Range. We select Convert Existing Surfaces and set the surface range from surface 2 to the primary at surface 5. It is important, as a general rule, not to start a non-sequential range on surface 1 as this will result in ray trace irregularities. Surface 3 will be used to hold the spider assembly and surface 4 will be used to hold the complex aperture in front of the primary. We will set the refract mode for surfaces 3 and 4 to reflect. And then enter opaque for glass 1 and glass 2 entries. These are the settings used to make an absorbing surface in a non sequential range. Now we will add the spider and secondary support structure. The first step in importing the mechanical structure is to open the CAD file in the CAD model viewer. To do this, you can either use the File Import CAD menu pool, or you can simply drag and drop the intended file into the Code 5 main window. Here, we open the step file of the mechanical structure. The CAD model viewer shows the CAD generated geometry, which can be rotated and zoomed in the same way as the 3D viewing window. You will also notice that there is a coordinate system shown in the model. This is the coordinate for all the CAD surfaces, and its location is determined when the geometry is constructed in the CAD program. This may or may not be in a convenient place for the optical design. In our case, we will have to shift the geometry in Z after importing it into the Code 5 model. The viewer also includes a tree with a list of all the available faces in the model. This particular CAD file contains both spider and secondary mount as well as the overall support structure for the telescope. We will simplify the geometry used in Code 5 by only importing the spider and secondary structures. To do this, we will use shift click in the tree to select all the components associated with the spider and secondary supports. Right click and select create user component. This creates a user component that we can rename. 
we will right click on the new component and rename it Spider. We can then save the CAD file as a .cfl file. We now open the Aperture Step file. In this case, we will use all the available geometry, so we only need to save it as a .cfl file. Back in Code 5, we will assign and position the CAD geometry to the model. As an initial step, we will clear the Z decenter values for surfaces 3 and 4 on the non sequential review table. This will place the coordinate systems for the imported geometry, when it is brought in, at the reference surface location for surface 2. We now open the Surface Properties page for Surface 3, and on the Surface Type tab, we will change the type setting to CAD Surface and click Commit Changes. On the resulting dialog box, we will enter the Spider CFL file, and for the component name, we will type in Spider and then click OK. One of the current limitations of using CAD generated geometries in a non sequential range is that in order for the assemblies to appear in the 3D viewing window, you must also add the geometry as a visualization CAD entity. This will be addressed in a later release. For now, we will add the spider geometry as a visualization CAD with the same settings. Refreshing the 3D viewing window, we can see that the spider is out of place. Clicking on one of the surfaces of the spider reveals that the coordinate system for the spider is at the reference surface location, which put the assembly too far out. To fix this, we will add a Z decenter of 16,750 millimeters to the surface using the non sequential table. This moves the geometry as well as its coordinate system to the correct location. For this demonstration, we will also clock the spider geometry in gamma by 10 degrees to make it easier to visualize the shadow of the spider in the pupil map since the horizontal spider veins won't exactly line up with the pixel boundaries. We now repeat this process for the aperture on surface 4. First we add it as a CAD surface type using the default All setting for the component name. We will use the scale and position CAD file settings to give the aperture an offset in Z of 19,950 millimeters. This will move the aperture but leave its coordinate system in place. We repeat these settings for the Visualization CAD tab. We will now refresh the 3D viewing window. This takes a little bit of time to generate. Now that the window is refreshed, we can see both the spider and the aperture in their proper place. Refreshing the pupil map, we can clearly see the shadow of the spider structure as well as the outline of the aperture. Refreshing the point spread function window, we can see a drastic change in the PSF. Most of this is due to the aperture's shape and not the spider structure. 
We can verify this by moving the spider structure out of the way of the beam with an X decenter and then rerunning the PSF. First, we tear off a copy of the PSF for reference. Now, we will give the spider an offset of 15,000 millimeters in X and then refresh the viewing window. Here you can see that the spider is fully out of the beam. Refreshing the PSF window, you can see that there are only very minor differences in the pattern without the spider. The differences are mostly noticeable between the center peak and the first rings. In this training video, we have demonstrated the use of CAD-generated surfaces in a non-sequential range. We have seen how to prepare, import, and orient these surfaces and assemblies. If you have any questions or need technical support, please contact us at code5-support at synopsis.com. Thank you for watching.